Hello, you're watching Every TV, and welcome to English News Broadcast. These are the top stories. Eighty-seven patients diagnosed positive for COVID-19 in test care down today. Martyrs' Day commemorated in the diaspora. The global COVID-19 cases and death toll continue to rise. And Russian Navy and aviation hold drills in the Pacific Ocean. The local news. We have an announcement from the Minister of Health. 87 patients have been diagnosed positive for COVID-19 in tests carried out today at quarantine centers in the central, southern, northern, and southern Red Sea regions. Out of this, 43 patients are from quarantine centers in Asmara Central Region, 37 patients are from quarantine centers in Dekmahara 29, Medefara 6, Ngela 1, and Dibara 1 Southern Region. Six patients are from quarantine centers in Masawa 3, Nakfa 3, Northern Red Sea Region. The last patient is from quarantine center in Azeb, Southern Red Sea Region. On the other hand, 119 patients who will be receiving medical treatment in hospitals in the central 91 and southern 28 regions have fully recovered and have been discharged from these facilities. Sadly, though, a 73-year-old patient in the Azeba region and a 47-year-old patient in the central region have passed away due to the pandemic. The total number of recovered patients to date has accordingly risen to 5,016, while the number of deaths has increased to 21. And the total number of confirmed cases in the country to date has risen to 5,508. Ministry of Health, Asmara, June 22, 2021. Eritreans in Germany, Israel, South Africa, Kuwait, and the U.S. enthusiastically commemorated June 20, Martyrs' Day. The commemoration event held in Frankfurt, in which nationals from all walks of life took part, was featured with candle vigil, laying wreath at the Martyrs' Park, as well as cultural and artistic performances. Eritrean nationals in Tel Aviv also commemorated Martyrs' Day with Patriot Exil, featuring various programs depicting the meaning of the day. At the event, the nationals contributed 30,000 shekels towards augmenting Martyrs' Trust Fund. The commemoration event in Pretoria, South Africa, was highlighted with kind of vigil and various programs organized by the Eritrean youth. The nationals also expressed conviction to strengthen participation and the implementation of the national development drives. At the commemoration event held in Kuwait, the nationals contributed 1,500 dinars towards bolstering the Martyrs Trust Fund. In the same vein, nationals in the U.S. city of Charlotte, North Carolina, commemorated June 20 with patriotic zeal and assumed responsibility of supporting 66 families of martyrs for two years. Likewise, at the commemoration event held in Portland, Oregon, the participants contributed 5,600 U.S. dollars towards augmenting the Martyrs Trust Fund and that 15 nationals assumed responsibility of supporting 15 families of martyrs for two years. Staff members of the Ministry of Education branch in the Gashbaka region contributed 156,000 Nakfa in support of families of martyrs. According to Mr. Tesva Gabriel Gabrasilase, head of social welfare in the region, the financial support that has been contributed by the staff members from their monthly salary was distributed to 15 families of martyrs in the sub zone of Shambuko, Molki, Laalai Gash, Mogolo, and Baruntu. Uh, pointing out that support of families of martyrs is not to be left to the government only, Mr. Tasfa Gabriel called on others to follow the noble example of the staff members of the Ministry of Education branch. The Mai Habar Technical School in Ginda Subzone has graduated 327 students and certificate today. Mr. Mohab Mohammed Ali, director of the school, said the students graduated in nine fields of studies, including auto mechanics, architecture, drafting, electricity, plumbing, journal steel works, electronics, serving, as well as woodworks. Representative of the graduates said the two year practical and theoretical vocational education provided has equipped them with foundational knowledge in their respective fields of study and expressed readiness to exert capacity level contribution in the national development drives. My Habert Technical School was established in 1994 and has graduated a total of 4,668 students in the last 21 commencements. Elections of area administrators and managing directors was conducted in the administrative areas of Kulantabai, Wakai, Fadabab, Tamarat, and Girmaikai, Fortosawa subzone. 
According to Mr. Abu Bakr Mahmoud, administrator of the SABS, on the objective of the elections was to replace the outgoing area administrators and managing directors as well as to ensure timely administrative service to the public. The elected area administrators and managing directors expressed conviction to provide efficient and timely service to the people that elected them. Now back with the international news after a short break. Welcome back. The total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases globally surpassed 179 million today, with the death toll exceeding 3.8 million. And the number of recovered patients has exceeded 164 million. This is according to World Meters. The World Health Organization says it is setting up in South Africa, given companies from poor and middle-income countries the know-how and license to produce COVID-19 vaccines in what President Cyril Ramaphosa called a historic step to spread life-saving technology. The tech transfer hub could make it possible for African companies to begin manufacturing vaccines. The advanced technology now used in shots from Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna and as a little less 9 to 12 months. Health experts say India's vaccination over the next few weeks could fall short of the blistering packs, rather pace set on the first day of a federal campaign unless it makes in roads and advance hinterland and bridges of shortage of doses. Russian military held today joint exercise of its aviation and Navy in the Pacific Ocean. According to the information provided by the Defense Ministry, the Army rehearsed coordinated actions against a naval group. Five warships, one submarine supporting aviation, including TU-142MZ long-range anti-submarine aircraft, took part in the exercises, and particularly the missile cruiser Vargog, the frigate Marshal Shamposhinkov as well as other military and support vessels. Russia has provided more details about its recent sea and air drills conducted in the recent Central Pacific, which included mock attacks on a simulated aircraft carrier strike group. Although nothing is known exactly when this exercise happened, its announcement comes just days after reports that U.S. Air Force were scrambled from Hawaii in response to Russian activities in the region. Floods from heavy rains in several eastern Indian states forced residents out of their homes as whole streets and residential areas were submerged in rainwaters. Footage from the eastern state of Bihar showed an overflowing Ganges River. In West Bengal, water flooded homes and people were wading through waist-high flood waters while others used to boast, rather boat to commute. Last month, more than 150,000 people were left homeless in the aftermath of Cyclone Yas, then unleashed storm surge in eastern India and Bangladesh, with heavy rains hampering relief work in sub low lying coastal areas. China Astronaut Research and Training Center in Beijing released a video clip showing Chinese astronauts receiving underwater training simulating in space for China's Tiangon Space Station mission. Astronauts had to put on training suits weighing more than 120 kilograms and entered a large water tank with the help of a mechanical arm. Water provides the best medium on Earth for simulating lightness in space and helps astronauts train for extra vehicular activity, such as spacewalking and maintenance. The water training tank, one rather 10 meters deep and with a diameter of 23 meters, is the largest in Asia. To simulate a five-hour mission in space, an astronaut has to undergo 50 hours of underwater training on Earth. Each training session lasts for two to six hours. And now a reminder of the top stories. Eighty-seven patients diagnosed positive for COVID-19 and tests carried out today. Martyrs' Day commemorated in the diaspora. The global COVID-19 case and deaths still continue to rise. And Russian Navy and aviation hold drills in the Pacific Ocean. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.